the morning for the next two days you are in Mr. Shoop's room, you're going to be researching Kansas artists. January 29th is Kansas Day, so that's why I got the idea to do this. So I'm going to go through the assignment with you and kind of just go over what you need to include. So you are going to be researching and making a slides presentation. And the standards we're going to hit here um, for the National Visual Arts Standards, the first one is, I can demonstrate awareness of ethical responsibilities to myself and others when presenting work on digital platforms. So we're going to hit that one by citing your sources where you get your pictures. Um, I can organize my artwork or design in a way that clearly communicates information or ideas. So you're going to be making a slides presentation that clearly communicates information and ideas. And then I can interpret the ideas and mood of artwork by analyzing the artist's approach, aesthetics, contextual information, subject matter, and use of media. That basically just means that you're going to talk about what you think the artist was trying to communicate, what you think about the artwork um, in your own words. So let's get started here. You've got a doc that goes through all of this information, the Kansas Artist Research. So there's a list included where you're going to choose an artist. I'll show you that in just a minute. And then I made um, a list that says what needs to be on each slide of your presentation. So slide one needs to have the name of the artist and a picture of their artwork, just so it has a nice visual to kind of grab the viewer's attention when you start. You need to have on slide two basic information about the artist. So you're going to be able to find um, information on all these artists, but you may not be able to find all the information on all of them. It just depends. Some artists have more information on their websites than others. So we want their first and last name. If you can find the year they were born, that's great. Um, if they are a historic artist and they're no longer living, you could put the year that they died. You may not be able to find that information if it's a contemporary artist, meaning someone who's still alive and still making work today. So if you can't find that one um, for a contemporary artist, I understand um, where they live or lived. And then if you can find where they studied, that would be great. Or there are a couple artists on the list who are self-taught, meaning they did not go to college to study art. Um, and then if you can find a photo of the artist, that's always nice to see them working or see what they look like. It just makes it a little more personal. So that's what needs to be on slide two. And then slide three, you need to have a big picture of the artist's work. I want you to include the information that you can find. You should be able to hopefully find the title of the artwork. The medium would be what it's made out of. So it might be uh, ceramic. It might be a bronze sculpture. It might be an oil painting. Whatever you can find, put that there. And then if you can find the year it was created, that's great too. That just kind of gives us some context, okay? Then you need to link to the website where you found the image. So don't just put google.com. You need to follow it to the original source and then copy and paste that in. I usually just make a small text box to add that information. And then I want in your own words, at least one sentence that describes the artwork. I said the idea and mood of the artwork. So the mood's like, you know, does it have an emotion? Does it make you feel curious or make you feel calm or peaceful or make you confused? Whatever you think that mood is, um, do that. And then the idea is just what do you think the artist was making this artwork about? So in your own words, your own ideas, do not copy and paste someone else's ideas about it. I want to see your ideas. And then slide four is another example of the artist's work with that same information linked to it um, and the sentence describing it. Okay. So also make sure you put the, um, the link to the image on the first slide as well. So you need to think about the design of this because design can help us communicate information clearly. Since this is a visual arts course, the visual, meaning how it looks, is important. So think about, um, think about that. So the background of your presentation, I just did a blank one to give you guys um, the file to start. You can choose a design that makes sense for your artist, and I'll show you that uh, more in a minute. But you need to make sure that the background doesn't distract from it or doesn't kind of fight with the information and with the picture. It needs to support it, complement it, and not take away from it, okay? You can customize the design to make it go with the style of your artist. So you could change colors, change fonts, make sure it's easy to read um, and that we, you know, it kind of just goes with it. And Google already has a lot of good features built in to help you make an effective design. For example, when you go to move something, the little red line pops up. If it's centered, that's very helpful. So you can get things in a 
place that makes sense. Um, and they already have like the title of the slide is a larger font than the body text. So those are important things. Uh, we call that hierarchy. It means like the most important information you're going to read first is going to catch your attention first. So it's just visual tricks that are helpful. Okay. So here's the list of artists. And this mainly um, has information like the about information. And then you're probably going to have to search to find images. So these artists, um, it's a mix of historic artists and contemporary artists. They're not in any particular order. So you can just kind of, you can look for a name that sounds interesting. Uh, Larry Schwarm, I had took photography from him when I was at Emporia State. He does photography and does a lot of uh, prairie fires. That's what he's best known for. He wrote a, did a book about it. So this link um, goes to his website. So you can click on about, most of them are going to say about or biography or something like that. And it will give you a little bit of information about the artist. So over here, it says like where he worked, you know, where he went to school. Um, so it has kind of some of that information. Okay. So that's what these links go to. Um, and then if it goes to their website, you'll be able to find the images there like on Larry Schwarm. So you can click on portfolio or works and you can see that. But then um, Black Bear Bozen, it only has a picture of him on this website and the information. So then I would need to search to find the pictures of his artwork if this was the artist I wanted to use. Okay. So this is a starting point. I was trying to help you out. Um, but then you may have to go beyond that to finish what you need to do. Okay. So I'm going to go back and show you a couple things in Google Slides. And then we'll be pretty much done here. So like I said, this is the very basic information. Um, or very basic presentation. It doesn't have anything customized yet. You can see the title is large, so this would be a good place to put your artist's name. But you can move it. You know, if you want to put, um, you want to put the name off to the side, and then put a picture of the work here. You know, you can move things around to make a new slide. You hit this plus sign. If you want to change the layout of it, you can go to slide apply layout and it gives you these options down here. If you want to change how it looks, you can use the built-in themes. And if you go over here on the side, it lets you see what they look like. Um, Beach day, that's the one I use the most, but depending on the artist, you know, you may do something a little more serious or a little more colorful, a little more playful, whatever you think would look the best. To add a picture, you can go to insert image, and then if you saved the picture, you can upload from the computer. Um, you can search the web, although that's maybe not the best way for this particular project. Probably the easiest is to copy the picture. I'll just use this as an example. And so if I right click, I can copy image and I can go back to my first page, change the name here. And I can do control V to paste in that picture. So you can make things bigger somewhat without it getting too fuzzy, but if it gets really, really fuzzy, you may wanna keep it small. Um, so then I can customize the design and go on and add all the information I need. And then when you're done, since I made it um, make a copy for you, all you'll have to do is click turn in. So you have two classes to work on this. Um, Today, obviously, you're going to watch this video first, <laughs> and then you are going to look through that artist list, try to find an artist that's interesting to you, and then just start working on your presentation. I would probably get like the information in first and then spend your time um, going through and making it look really good. So you have two class periods. Take your time. Use the time I'm giving you to make these presentations awesome.